Hey guys, Mike from Arnold Tutoring. I thought I would show a video for showing that the derivative of sine x is cos x. So we learn that often in trigonometric derivatives by uh, memorizing a table essentially. We know that the derivative of sine x is cos x, but how do we prove and show that? Well, anytime we have to prove a derivative, we always go back to the definition of the derivative. So this question says, determine uh, the derivative of sine x with respect to x using first principles. First principles is another fancy way of saying using the definition of the derivative. So as soon as we see that, we want to write down the definition. So uh, I'm going to write um, d by dx of sine x equals the limit as h goes to 0. Actually, I'll start with f of x of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That is the definition of the first derivative, and if we don't have that burned into our brains already, we should. I've also written a couple things in red here. Um, these are limits that we can either have memorized or that we can think about using L'Hopital's rule, which is for another video. But in general, these two that we should have learned before learning trigonometric derivatives uh, will come in handy in this proof. So the limit is f of, of f of x plus h. Um, that means we just put x plus h in anywhere we see an x. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x, that's f of x, over h. Perfect. This is a limit now, and as long as we've got that h on the bottom, we have a problem. So we have to keep expanding. What can we do on the top? We've got sine of one angle plus another angle. Well, the only thing we know how to do there is... Um, use our two angle identity. So sine of a plus b, we might remember that. I'll step over here and I'll say the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of a plus b, we say sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So this is sine x cos h plus sine h cos x minus the sine x we still have there all over h. That's really the only thing we could have done. So even if it looks like we're stuck, we can't do anything with the h on the bottom. Sine x is stuck, so we've got to use our two-angle identity. Now here's the big trick in this question. Can we combine any two terms? Well, none of them are perfect, but at least these two terms have a sine x in them. So I'm going to group those together and factor out that sine x. So I'm going to bring a sine x out to the front, and I'm left with cos h minus 1 when we factor the sine x out of there. So cos h minus 1, and then we've still got this term, so plus sine h cos x all over h. Why did I do that? Well, now we can use this identity that we know of the limit as we're going to 0 for the angle, cos x minus 1 over x. You see we can group that right here out of this term. So that's going to be 0, and the h is also under here. I'm actually going to write that just so that we can see it. The h is also under this term, and here we've got our other identity of sine of the angle that's going to 0 over that angle. That equals 1. So this becomes the limit as h goes to 0. Limit laws say we can break these two things up. So it'll be sine x times that cos h minus 1 over h plus the limit as h goes to 0 of this part, sine h cos x over h. We just said that cos h minus 1 over h, that's 0. So this whole thing is 0. Don't have to worry about that. Plus, we said that this piece is sine h over h is 1 times cos of x, and that doesn't depend on h cos of x. There's no there's no h in this piece, so the fact that h is going to 0 doesn't matter. So it's just going to be 1 times cos x, which is cos x. And that proves our shortcut uh, derivative that we know sine x, is, the derivative of sine x, is cos of x. So that's kind of a nice way of using the definition of the derivative to prove one of the trig uh, derivatives that we already learned just by looking at a table. If you have any other questions, you can always email us, info at arnoldtutoring.com, and please consider subscribing for a bunch more calculus and pre-calculus videos. Thanks.